All right. Enough foolishness. We'll behave now. My first guest won an Oscar for her role in The Fisher King and then a Tony for her part in Lost in Yonkers in this very same year, actually. Please welcome Mercedes Rule. Friendly people. That's great. Are there any producers out there? No, no, I'm afraid not. We won't let them in. So uh, you, you got a. Let me ask you right away. You got a Tony and an Oscar in yeah. the same year. Yeah. Now, if I did that, I would walk around. I'd like have a hat made so I could wear them. You know, I would want everyone to know. Did you flaunt them? Did you put them in a prominent place? Well, well the Tony has a nice little disc that you can take off of the holding piece and actually wear it on a thong around your neck. <laughs> That has occurred to me. <laughs> but the, uh, um, the, I, I have that in a sort of quiet place where people have to say, hey, where's your Tony? And I have to say, oh, it's over here on this bookshelf in the corner and look very modest. But the... Um, See, I think you're crazy. What I would do is I would build a shelf right, right a there. Shrine. Right when, when people walk into my house, there'd be a Tony and an Oscar right there, and they'd be specially lit. Right, candles in front of them, perpetually burning. Right, and it would be sort of um, like revolving slowly. So you could see it from the rain. <laughs> Oh, Tony and Oscar. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Some new age music yeah, right, perpetually floating right. it. But the, um, the Oscar I do have up on a mantle. And um, it sat there for a while in solitary splendor. And I was taken out to a Mexican restaurant for my birthday mm -hmm. um, this year. And it was a new restaurant. And they were giving out little souvenirs. And they were giving out tiny little sombreros and serapes. And mm -hmm. I, they were nice. And they gave it to me. And I brought it home. And I was about to throw it out when I looked at the Oscar, and I looked at this little sombrero yeah. and the serape, and I thought, this is a perfect fit. So <laughs> I went over, and sure enough, I put it on at a cocky angle and put the... And it, it, it's now uh, a Mexican Oscar. Oscar <laughs> Oscarito, we call it. <laughs> so the Oscar committee is going to be very upset when they see this. I don't know. It might start a fad. Actually, I've been thinking I'd get G.I. Joe costumes or those Ken costumes and sort of change the outfit seasonally. No, they, they should provide accessories. <laughs> I think if you win an Oscar. <laughs> they should. <laughs> you should get a little, you know, little suits and... So you can change them. I could start up a little cottage industry. There you go. That's what this show is for, to think of good right, marketing right. ideas. <laughs> a Reagan phone call, you know, that stuff, just time waster. <laughs> this is what it's really about. No, but you've, uh, you've actually had some, these are some good roles. You did a, you know, a great job with them, but you had some good roles. Yeah, these were, these were terrific roles, and I was very lucky to, to get them. Um, it, but it is amazing, the scripts that come across your Well, desk. that's a common, I mean, that's a complaint that a lot of, women in the industry have is that there are not good roles for women. Do you think that's true? Well, I'll say there are a lot of roles for women, but right, <laughs> about, about, you know, maybe 9% of them are good roles. For instance, I, I got a script. Now, this is a true story. I got a script a couple of weeks ago that is a Go project mm -hmm. that had um, four main roles in it, three women and a man. And the guy is sort of the hero of the story, and he's in his, oh, mid-50s, and he's kind of crusty, and he's been around the block a couple of times, but he still has that ineffable, ineffable sexy quality of a 55-year-old 50, guy. <laughs> that women find so attractive. Yeah, right, right. right. Um, <laughs> in the movies, then, women are always loving 60-year-old men. Yeah, right. It doesn't and, happen. And, and, the, and the woman who will play opposite him, of course, is... The ingenue, who is younger than springtime, who is younger than life, who is, they, they hope to get from the description, you know, an, a, an embryo with breasts. I mean, really young. <laughs> We're and, talking um, young. Yeah. And so you go, okay, okay. An embryo with be... breasts. <laughs> so, oh, wow. <laughs> somebody, somebody who may be not born yet. Right. You know, that malleable. So you figure, okay, so that's not going to be the role I'll be doing. So there are two other roles. And I read on. And the I'm first sure those one, roles are good. The first one... <laughs> The first one dies naked. Uh, I think she drowns in a pool of her own vomit, crude but true. And the, and the second one is found uh, hanging in her underwear, stabbed or shot on a hook on the back of a bathroom door. And I thought, well, well, what could anybody possibly think I might see as a creative opportunity in either of these roles, you know? I mean, call well, me... Well, it's how you hang there, <laughs> I think. It's what you do with it. Come on. It was no, such a baby. It really made... <laughs> it really makes you start thinking about, you know, supplementing the career with bake sales or something. I don't know. 
All right. Well, listen, we're going to have to uh, go away for a second, but we'll, we'll be right back with Mercedes Rule. like this Conan O'Brien. I think I'll be watching a lot of him. I'm not so sure about this Conan fella. And was that really Reagan? I think he's gonna be terrific! Hooray for Conan! I don't like him! We're back and we're here. We're here talking to Mercedes Rule. Very nice of you to come here. Let me ask you something. Do you, uh, you must have to do a lot of this kind of thing to promote your movies or whatever you're doing at the time. Yeah. Is it, do you like doing talk shows? Is this pleasurable? I know it's kind of fun from this end, but I really don't, haven't had any experience the other way around. It's actually, it is kind of fun, you know, once you get into the, the rhythm of doing them. Mm -hmm. um, although, just two days ago, I had to go up and do some promotion in Canada. Right. I don't know if you've tried to get into Canada lately. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> used to be you could just drive right on into Canada, you know? Right. About and a week before the show, I tried to get into Canada. Right. <laughs> so you used to be able to get go... Get back here, you. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> um. Wow. <laughs> But I, I had to go into Canada, and I wasn't mm -hmm. driving across the border, which is fairly easy. You just say hi-ho to the border guard. But when you come in, you have, by plane, you have to go through immigration. Um, and I, I didn't have a passport. Nobody told me that I should have a passport. And I was sitting next to... Who, who's that, the guy on, on Hogan's Heroes? Werner, Werner... Werner Klemper. Klemper. Colonel Klink, everybody. Colonel Klink. Colonel Klink. Colonel Klink was <laughs> sitting next to me just by chance on the plane going up, and he said, do you have your passport? And I said, no, you need a passport? And he said, no, you don't need a passport. Just right. kidding. <laughs> Cut to, we're, we're at, you know, immigration, and, and we have to go through the little line, and I get to this young girl, she's French, and she says, merci your passport. And I said, I don't, I don't have one. And she said, may I see your birth certificate? And I said, I'm an actress. I don't carry a birth certificate. <laughs> what if I died? Someone would find it on me. You know, so I said, I don't have one. <laughs> um, so then she said, well, I can't let you into the country. I said, wait, I had to do promotion for Columbia. You know, I have a high calling here. But they let Werner <laughs> Klemper right through, didn't they? No, no, they stopped him too. He was, he was going to <laughs> do... He was like, Hogan! <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> I did an impression, everyone. <laughs> so he's waiting on line behind me, and I turn around when she asks for the passport, and I laugh, and he laughs, and she <laughs> turns to both of us, and she says, do you think this is a laughing matter? <laughs> I said, well, I, I, and she said, this is not funny. You are crossing a border. This is very uh, serious matter. I don't see why either one of you are laughing. This is not funny. You think this is funny? And we're going, no, no, it's not funny. You Was know? he wearing a monocle? <laughs> <laughs> I wish he were. <laughs> So Some finally, kind of a mistake. So finally, she 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 clips this blue card to my uh -huh. my entry form, and he comes. Werner comes up, and she clips a blue card to his, and the blue card, little do we know, sends us into the bad boys and bad girls room, uh -huh. and where you have to go through another interview with a person who says. I know you from Fisher King. And I said, yeah, I'm an American, you know? I live in America. And Wait, she so said, they recognize you and it didn't make a difference? Me. They still wanted either a birth certificate or a passport. Right. So then they made me sit in section C, which is rows and rows of seats, you know? And I'm the only one sitting there. And it's getting kind of scary, you know? And the hours are, it seems like, ticking by. But, I but was you were treated about, well? They gave you food? And no food. I couldn't even call my lawyer. <laughs> I Those said, Canadians. can I make a phone call? They said, no, sit there, you know? And I'm like, okay. <laughs> So finally, the person who was picking me up from Columbia called mm -hmm. from the other side, as we were coming to call it, the other side, you know, <laughs> we're never going to get to again. Uh -huh. And they wouldn't let him take me out, but they brought me into a room that's sort of like those prison 
rooms where you can have a conference with somebody on the outside. There's this bulletproof glass. You talk through, glass. like, a special thing? <laughs> we oh, made I've... sign language, get me out, you know? <laughs> and uh, finally, after about an hour, they got me out. But who came for Clink? <laughs> he was sitting there when I He's left. He's still there. <laughs> no one knows it. Free Clink, everybody. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but I mean, you know, there was this article that they're letting people across the border now that, that look like, you know, a Zapata or somebody with, you know, right. guns and bullets strapped across them and, and evil and mayhem in their eyes, you know, terrorists of the first degree. They get wafted right in. But an American, totally So you hate, you hate all American. Canadians now. That's the message that you want to bring to the show. Open, open up those borders, Gee, guys. Let's you, not get too you, serious. You and Werner should have broken out, and it would have been a... You would have made a mint on the made-for-TV movie right. <laughs> You're going to say to Werner Klemper, <laughs> breaking out from Canadian prison? Don't let it That's go any further than this see. show. This That's could, what I want to see. This could be written. All right, later on the show, we have Chris Connolly and Mary Matlin. We're going to have to go for now, but uh, thank you very much for coming on. My pleasure.